Thank you, Father. Okay. We got a special speaker. Why is he special? Because he's all the way from Lakeland, Florida, and he works for the government in the post office. Yay. Let's welcome Tony. <laughs> Give you some room to walk around, Tony. Oh, you don't need these lights on. You got a little iPad, don't you? Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to everyone online. Good morning to my wife at home. Uh, so much word that went forth this morning and so much confirmation. Uh, as I was sitting there, Aisha, she gave me a word and uh, the Holy Spirit put on my heart to share this uh, testimony. So I'm going to share this testimony before I get started. But the topic today is advancing God's kingdom. So we know at this time, there's a lot of deception going on. There's a lot going on. And me personally, I've just been consecrating myself to the Lord personally. There's so much going on. But... Um, <clears throat> Pastor Richard knows of this, uh, this testimony, and uh, approximately two weeks ago, uh, I would say about approximately um, a month ago now, it doesn't matter the time frame, a month ago now, um, Evangelist Mason called Pastor Richard and called me and asked me if I can help him be an event coordinator uh, for his crusade that was putting on in uh, Jacksonville. And uh, I said, yeah, I'll definitely do it after I prayed about it, uh, spoke to my wife about it. And um, we both knew that the Lord was opening up doors and creating expectation in our lives for new things that he was doing in our lives. But when I took it on, I didn't realize how much responsibility and how much uh, work and I didn't really have a team of people to really help out. I said, Lord, you have to help me because I'm in over my head. And um, so I leaned on to my wife. Uh, she has an administrative anointing. She was writing things and doing, doing, doing just certain things for me to help out, making phone calls. I never made as many phone calls in my life just calling different churches, pastors, and, and speaking to them while I was working. And uh, thank God for technology. This is a part of advancing God's kingdom. And uh, so anyway, um, Evangelist Mason was just asking me to do certain things that he had needed. And the day of the crusade, I'm in the middle of nowhere, um, we have the stage up, and he contacts me, and he says, hey, I need a wireless hotspot. Do you have a wireless hotspot? <laughs> no, I didn't have a wireless hotspot. It's about two hours before the crusade starts. <laughs> and so by my surprise, in that moment, I was about to get frustrated because I'm like, there's no way I can get to Walmart or somewhere to go and get this wireless hotspot. And our cell phones kind of go in and out when using that. So in that moment, uh, the Lord sent this guy. He came with a backpack. And um, he asked me, he said, hey, what's going on here? I said, well, hey, we're doing a crusade. And I was letting him know uh, at the end of the night we're giving away food and just things that we were going to do in the crusade. And he looked at me and he was like, um, I'm hungry. Do you have anything that... Uh, that anything to eat right now and the Holy Spirit put on my heart that I had the sandwich because in the midst of moving around and preparing everything you know I didn't realize that I still had half of my sandwich that I didn't finish so I said hey here's a half of my sandwich you go ahead and eat that and he was like you serious I said yeah he was like oh man I'm about to cry and I said man hey go ahead it's fine it's fine. I, I appreciate you uh, for coming and talking with me. 
And so he's sitting there and I'm talking with him, I'm getting to know him. And um, he opens up his bag and he has a laptop and the screen is broken. And I'm just sitting there and then he pulls out this wireless hotspot. And I'm like, Lord, you are blowing my mind. I'm like, really? I said, bro, is that a wireless hotspot? He said, yeah. He said, you need it? I said, of course I need it. I said, we need that for the crusade. And just in the midst of what we needed, what Mason needed, what I needed to help along with that crusade, God had already provided it. He sent that guy out of nowhere walking up to me and he had the wireless hotspot. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. So I just want to start with uh, Matthew 25, 15. I'm going to skip down to 20, 20, 20 and through 21. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. He then left on his trip the servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I gave and I have earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. So I feel like this is the time that we're in, that he is maturing us. And as we continue to lean on him and seek his face, consecrate ourselves to him, he has given us more responsibility from the process that he took us through through all of these years. <clears throat> so <clears throat> we all have been, we all, we have all been given talents and responsibilities. We all have different talents and gifts that are, we are able to utilize to overcome every obstacle in our lives. In order to maximize what God has given, we are to yield every area of our lives to the Holy Spirit. Now, for example, <clears throat> when I'm challenged, I'm always asking God to show me his perspective. Because my perspective can be cloudy my perspective can be wrong. The Lord, show me um, your perspective in this situation, in the situation of my home, in a situation where everywhere you're sending me, situation of my job. Uh, Pastor Richard, he said, I work for the government. Yes, I work for the post office. And I've been there for three and a half years. And uh, the atmosphere in there, it's it's of the world, and we're not in the world, but it's of the world. So it's confusing. Uh, fear is in that building as well. But I don't succumb to that. Because <laughs> I know that I'm the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So when I come, when I step in, I release the kingdom of God. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the atmosphere has shifted. <laughs> now, with that, <clears throat> with that, or just living a lifestyle again, and I, I mentioned consecration, but repentance and seeking the Lord, praying without ceasing, having a fear of God. And before I even go into work, I'm praying, I'm asking the Holy Spirit to lead me, direct me. And the Holy Spirit is putting things on my heart to pray for before I even get there. <clears throat> or in any circumstance, any situation, just flowing with the Holy Spirit. God is maturing us to carry his glory, preparing ourselves to enter every door with boldness as Jesus opened doors that no man can shut. As we advance God's kingdom, in our home, jobs, through technology, and everywhere we go. <clears throat> we must flow with the Holy Spirit 
and follow his lead. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on your own understandings, but in all our ways acknowledge him and he will direct our path. <clears throat> Jesus has the keys to death, hell, and the grave, and he also has the keys to our assignment. Everything we are and are to become is all in him. I've learned firsthand that when we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that all things will be added unto you. <clears throat> the Lord put um, one of my good friends on my heart this particular morning in the past, uh, it was probably about four months ago. And uh, he'll do that from time to time, just like I know he does that to you. He'll give you a name, or it could even be your wife, your husband. And uh, sometimes you'll feel what they're feeling. So, uh, you know, you have the instinct to go ahead and pray for them. Or if not, you give them a call and see what's going on. So half the time when he does this with me, I, I don't know what's going on with them, so I just be obedient. So I've learned over the years when he does this with me to step out call or if he's directing me to go there be obedient so I, I called up my friend and um, he was just in a, a place of he didn't know what to do at this moment so he have uh, a family business with his father and he chose to step away for situations that was going on and he was just like Tony I don't know what's the next step so as he's talking with me um, I'm listening, I'm listening, and I'm listening to what the Holy Spirit has given me. And um, we prayed together. And then after we prayed, the, conversa the conversation shifted. Um, his son came in and was like, Dad, I want some of your good tacos. And so he lit up. So he started to talk to me about the tacos that he made. Tony, I need to have you and your wife and your family over to make the tacos, and by the way, I cook a good steak, and he was like, I don't know what happens, it's just like, once I cook, it's like, all of these recipes come to me. And I'm sitting there, and I'm starting to laugh. So I pull over to the side, and I'm just listening to the Holy Spirit, and he shows me food trucks. So I'm like, waiting, and I watch Pastor Richard a lot when, when uh, he talks about when the Lord shows him visions. So I'm waiting, I'm waiting, and he's finally done uh, letting me know about all the food that he cooks. I said, Mark, that's it. That's the talent. That's the gifts right there. He's like, what? What do you mean? I said, listen, while you were speaking to me, I stopped, I pulled over to the side. The Holy Spirit was ministering to me. He showed me food trucks. I said, listen, so as I opened my mouth, the Holy Spirit started to fill it even more. So I said to him, I said, look, brother, as you consecrate yourself, as you seek his face, I see as you cook for people, as you step into that, you're going to receive even more recipes. It's going to be so much that it's going to be different. And right now, um, we all know that tampering of food and different situations going on. But I said the food that he's going to give you is going to nourish the people's body as they come to you, as they come to your food truck. I say, he's going to send people to you that you're going to disciple that's going to work alongside of you. So you're going to be ministering to them. You're going to be a mentor to many. And as they come up to you, as people come up and buy the food, you're going to also fill them with the word of God as well. Mm. Powerful. So... <laughs> Um, he called me uh, in December. That was four months prior to December. He called me in December, and um, he said, hey, he sent me a picture of him, and he sent me a picture of this guy, and he said, listen, I want to just let you know what happened. So I'm all ears, 
And he's like, um, so he's a powerful man of God, by the way. So he was led to go to this barbecue shop. So he liked the food. And on his birthday, he went back with his wife. Well, the owner was walking around, which he didn't know he was the owner. And the owner, you know how owners come around and they are managers and they ask, how you liking the food? So this guy ended up walking to his table. So the Lord gave Mark a word for that guy. So uh, it touched him and they exchanged phone numbers. The guy called him up and said, hey, Mark, can you come in? I want you to meet my team. So Mark ended up going and Mark ended up uh, finding out that they actually wanted him to um, do Bible study with them. So he was asking, hey, would you like to, to uh, do Bible study? We've been looking for someone to teach. And, and Mark was just, he was telling me, he was like, can you believe, can you believe what he was asking me? And um, so he said, yeah. Then the guy, he got to know the guy even more, and he was letting the guy know how he cooks, and the guy also tasted his food. Uh, next thing you know, the guy asked him, hey, I have an event going on. Do you want to come and cook at my event? I have another chef there as well. So he sends me the picture with his chef <laughs> uniform on with uh, another chef and then the guy that he had met. Come to find out the guy's a multimillionaire that he met. So he says to me, as he's talking to me, I'm trying to get myself together because I'm crying, I'm emotional. I'm like, wow, Lord, I'm celebrating with him. Divine appointments, divine geographical locations. Like when the Lord says, go, go. And on his birthday, the Lord bless him on his birthday? That's amazing. So the guy says to Mark, he says, Mark, listen, you love to cook, and I have two food trucks on my property that I brought that's just sitting there that I didn't know <laughs> what to do with them. But now I'm offering you one of them, <laughs> and you can do an LLC, and you can um, put it in your area and brand in the first one. After you establish that one, then you can come get the next one. <laughs> so by that time, I'm just yelling. <laughs> I don't know who is in their car. I'm in the parking lot. I don't know who is in their car watching me. I don't care. <laughs> but I'm like, Mark, what? What? And this is the time when he's opening up doors. All we have to do is trust him and seek him. He'll have us do our part, but he'll always do the bigger part. So I want to give an analogy. Um, our God is greater and bigger than Super Mario Brothers, but I just want to give this analogy. <laughs> so you, any of you guys play Super Mario? <laughs> What's your favorite character? <laughs> Mario? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Okay. All right. <laughs> Yoshi. <laughs> All of those characters are different, right? Yeah. They look different. Um, their talents are different. <laughs> but they're all for the same goal, right? Kind of like us, yeah. right? So we look different. We may minister different talk different, you know, different talents, different gifts, but they all come together as we're the body. But one thing that we have, we have the same Holy Spirit, Deuteronomy's power. <laughs> and it's not similar to when we get the star in Super Mario and to get big and invisible <laughs> the Holy Spirit is greater than that. <laughs> but you see my point. It's funny, I was looking up Deuteronomy's power, and uh, Google's definition says, 
deals with the power given to individuals to perform certain miracle signs and wonders, including healing and the ability to prophesy and speak in tongues. Even Google knows. <laughs> so we all know in, in Mario, they also have an adversary assigned to each level, which tries to stop and take out, uh, take us out from completing and going to the next level. But like the game itself, we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Now, um, at first I wasn't going to, to share this testimony, but the Lord put on my heart to share this. And um, God is so good. And so many times um, <clears throat> when we don't realize how much he actually protects us while we're sleeping, um, he has took me and my wife through a process of just learning um, how to cancel assignments of the enemy and just certain things that the enemy would do with certain practitioner, practitioners and, and during witching hours and all kind of nonsense while you sleep. And he has taught us when he wakes us up to first ask him, Lord, I'm here. Your servant is here. What can I do? <laughs> what are you waking me up for? What can I do? I'm here to serve you. At certain times that he'll just have us pray at that time or just lay on our face, lay, lay on our face, do dif different things. But I had an experience about three weeks ago. And... Um, it's still kind of, I'm still stunned about it. So anyway, I was leaving the post office like a regular day. That day I was moving. I was like ready to get to my location. And um, I stopped at a stoplight that I usually stop to all the time. And at the stoplight, I usually make a left to go to where I'm going to. As the light turned green. I felt the Holy Spirit unction me, wait, like a strong unction. And I still had a choice. Either I can move forward because I was in a rush, or either I can just listen. So I chose to listen. As I chose to listen, I see, and now this is going fast. This is happening quickly. I'm taking time to, to express this and articulate it. But as I was waiting there at the green light, here comes a sem semi flowing, going through their red light. It looked like he was doing about a good 45 miles an hour. He just, vroom. If I would have made that left at that time, he would have hit me on that left side. And as I sat there, I'm like, well, like I said, I'm still stunned. So I know it's many times that he has saved my life. There was times when I had car accidents that he has saved my life. I know about my praying grandmother, my praying mother, when I was out there sinning. And we all fall short, right? Even now, we all fall short. But how good he is, how much he loves us. And I was just like, Lord, just thanking him, thanking him for his protection, thanking him for directing me, thanking him for his love on how much he loves me. <clears throat> but we always know that the weapons will be, be formed, but they shall not prosper. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and end here, but three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. Yes. And the greatest of these is love. God loves never fails. His love never fails. So, Father, I just thank you today. I just thank you 
for speaking to us and, all, and through all of us today on the confirmation that you gave us all today. I thank you, Father God, as we <clears throat> go forth and step into what you have for us. I thank you for more grace and wisdom imparted into us as you open the doors that no man can shut and close the doors that no man can open. Father, I thank you for a hedge of protection around all of us as we leave here today, as we go forth on our week, Father God. And Father God, I thank you for such a time as this, for all that you are doing with us, the body, as we advance your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen.